Welcome back to the Lion Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. For newcomers to this program, it is a place that we aggregate the world's leading experts on all the things around health, wellness, fitness, mindfulness, psychology, all sorts of good topics. And uh, this conversation is with my dear friend, Lindsay Simsick, who is uh, one of the most sensitive, intuitive, thoughtful humans that uh, I have in my orbit. So I'm really grateful to get to share this conversation with y'all. Uh, before, I wanted to share a an idea from a fellow called Paul Graham, who writes all these various essays. And uh, one of the ideas that I liked from him, and something that I read recently, is that one of the best ways for us to uncover, uh, you could say, mistruths or um, parts of cultural thought that are incorrect uh, would be to focus on the taboo subjects. I think it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. Uh, we have ignorance in silence, which is why the First Amendment is so valuable for people to be able to speak, um, even if the ideas seem wacky, crazy. Uh, a lot of really valuable discoveries and inventions come from something that may have seemed like a, a wacky, crazy idea. And uh, I think that by focusing energy into the places that are taboo, you're not allowed to speak about, uh, I feel like those are the places, if there's a, a reason to defend those positions, uh, whether it's a religious thing, whether it's a political thing, if it is illegal or frowned upon to talk about or think about a certain thing, I think it's a, an interesting roadmap on the, perhaps the topics that it is wise for a uh, thoughtful person to go deeper into. And I think if we allow ourselves a spaciousness to go deeper into those topics, we oftentimes stumble upon uh, some information that uh, perhaps was uh, quite true and uh, disruptive to the present narrative uh, from whoever the whoever the the storytellers the narrative tellers the the history his story uh, so i think it's an interesting exercise task for the week encounter discover explore topics subjects ideas belief systems that you've been taught are taboo disgraceful um, inappropriate to think about or research or look into and look into those things find out it's great if there's nothing to hide then you know you put yourself out in the open it's not until there's something some point of insecurity that all of a sudden walls get built around the thing so i think it's interesting uh so this conversation that was a, that was a random rambling rant uh, i hope that wasn't obnoxious for anybody but i find that to be an interesting idea look deeper into the taboo things. Um, this conversation, we get into some of those taboo things. We get into thoughtfulness and mindfulness and ways to quell some of the static thoughts that are streaming through our minds. So we can create a little bit of spaciousness or quietness for some of the, the inner inner talk to come out or something that I'm, I got a lot of work to do on. Uh, so really valuable conversation. I hope you guys devour this thing. Uh, Lindsay is the host of the or co-host of the Almost 30 podcast, and uh, she's just a great person. I'm really excited to get to share the conversation with you guys. Um, if you have interest in sorting out your body uh, for free, you can check out AlignPodcast.com. Com. If you have any kind of neck pain, shoulder pain, stiffness in your hips and shoulders and such, uh, I highly recommend you look into the positions in which you sit, uh, the manner in which you stand, and uh, I recommend spending at least a little bit of time on the ground each day. Naturally, when you're on the ground, you're mobilizing your hips and your knees and your ankles. Uh, you're circulating fluid more effectively, and uh, you'll see many a culture such as there was research recently from UCLA where they went out and studied Hatsa tribes people and they found that the, the people spent, I, I think I've mentioned this one here actually already, I apologize if you were hearing this for the second time, uh, but the, the folks, it wasn't that they were moving so much more, I mean they're moving a bit more, 
but the manner in which they rest is much more active. So doing things that like a, a squat, if you're a yoga person, you call it a malasana, you might call it a third world squat, you might call it a whatever, deep squat, whatever. Uh, but spending time squatting if you're resting, spending time kneeling, spending time in all the positions that I break down for you for free at alignpodcast.com. And from there, you'll see a little pop-up and uh, you can download the absolutely free tutorial on how to sit, stand uh, more effectively and also spend more time on the ground effectively. Uh, and then also the first week of the Align Method Online program is absolutely free as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for reviews on iTunes. Thanks for sharing this. And uh, I hope you devour this conversation. I hope it massages your ear canals. And uh, here we go. Back to the scheduled programming with Lindsay Simsek. The cold plunge kind of inspired me in terms of like inviting in overwhelm so that you are prepared Mm -hmm. for, you know, that unexpected overwhelm. I've been, especially at the beginning of this year, I've been feeling incredibly overwhelmed and anxious and I've come to understand like what it is and how I'm going to use it. You know, I think a lot of people get so overwhelmed and they run, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like that fight or flight, like how do I squash it? How do I, you know, transmute it? Um, And so, yeah, I just think we've had to do that with almost 30. I've had to do that personally, especially like in that time in your twenties to your thirties, like, you're just being tested in so many different ways. So how can you leverage that feeling of being overwhelmed? So how do you? Um, Podcast started. <laughs> <laughs> so people should know. We have the beautiful Sarah. Mm-hmm. Say your last name again. Pila. Pila the beautiful oh, Sarah Pila from, from Spectrum News. So we're inside our sauna right now. It's my sauna, I guess. But we're all one. So it's, it's all of our sauna, I guess. Um, and we have the beautiful Sarah Pila here recording from Spectrum News and the beautiful Lindsay Simsek mm-hmm. from Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. And we just did the, we did some breath work stuff. And then we did the cold plunge. And now we're here in the sauna mm-hmm. and we're talking about overwhelm. Yeah. So how I, does one leverage that? Um, or however you want to take that. Yeah. I, I feel like I've been meeting my anxiety later in my life. So I grew up feeling like a pretty, you know, relaxed yet wild kid, you know, never really thinking that I was stressed. Um, and that takes me into like middle school, high school, college where, Yes, there were definitely um, moments in my life that were really, really challenging, but I never considered myself someone who was anxious. My memory is not the best and allows me to forget a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) However, (laughs) However, I believe my body is so smart and has held all of those things and more. And I think... You know, now that I'm in my 30s and I am really tuning into my body, my mind, my heart, like the connection there, I'm realizing that I have I have some work to do as it relates to my anxieties, because what's worked for me in the past was let's just forget it and distract. Right. And now, um, whether it's through my new relationship or through our growing business uh, through creating my music, I'm just being presented with these moments of like, oh, I can't do that anymore. Mm. Like I actually have to face it. And so I did um, some channeled writing the other day, which for anyone out there, you can do it. It's not like I'm like special and I do channeled writing. It's more uh, for me, I, I meditate. I talk to my higher self, my spirit guides, whoever wants to come in and help me. And I ask a question. And because the top of 2020 felt so overwhelming and anxiety ridden for me, I was like, okay, I have to ask, like, what is the purpose of this? And so what came through, and I'll just give you a super abridged version, but was that the overwhelm was God. (laughs) Hmm. Um, that's like the overview. But when I dug <laughs> a little bit version. deeper, yeah, when I when I dug a little bit deeper, it was just like this really um, def- divine call. You know, it's it's something that's like actually 
speaking to me specifically and calling me to go deeper specifically. And once I realized that, I I never looked at an overwhelming situation or feeling the same way again because I felt I felt special. You know, I felt like, mm. wow, okay, this must be for me. And so um you know, it, it both highlights my humanness and my connection to God, source, universe, you know, whatever you believe. And so through meditation, through movement, and through just really nourishing myself in every, you know, in every definition of the word, I've been able to honor that feeling hmm. rather than avoid it. How do you define God oh, in God. this context? Yeah, God is, I mean, God is everything. God is, um, is connection. God is love. God is, um, feeling. I feel when I'm able to truly feel into my feeling, Mm -hmm. I feel a undeniable connection to God. Um, and that's really feeling from like my heart space. So being able to drop down from my head to my heart and actually feel whether it's a overwhelming feeling, nervous, m- maybe even anger, you know, the fact that I can connect to that feeling and, and emit and express through my heart, I believe is, is not of just me. It's definitely of something greater. Just me is up in my head. You know, that feeling of just kind of like pinging around in your head. Um, But when I'm able to to drop down, I just feel so much more connected to what created me. Yeah. There's, uh, I'm all hot and bothered for Ram Dass Mm -hmm. these days. I Mm -hmm. I think you already know. And he's spoken about, he kind of made like a, a, a joke or metaphor of how at one point he was, controlled by his various neuroses, Mm -hmm. whether it's like some sexual addiction or whatever, trapped in your thoughts and whatever it may be. And uh, presently, all of those various neuroses are, they're still there. It's not like they, like he chopped them out or dropped them off, Mm -hmm. but they're just more like little children that are kind of like sitting right. around a table and it's like, oh, right, there's the, the, the self-doubt or there's the, you know, whatever, whatever gets pulls your mind into a certain direction that might perhaps feel uncomfortable in the moment. Mm-hmm. If you can kind of witness that, like gestalt therapy, you can kind of like put it into a pillow and like talk to it. You know, so you can have, have that relationship of like, oh, there you are. Yes. Instead of running, 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 as we run away, it just feeds power to that. Mm-hmm, exactly. So if you can kind of like invite it in for tea, yes. I think there's something to that, which I'm like, I'm in process of, but upon hearing those things and listening to you now, um, I had this similar experience just last night, like feeling, feeling certain ways and, uh, kind of having a moment of being able to, to, to watch that mm. actually in a very open, interested way, as opposed to like trying to push it down. Right. You know, is that something that you experience? Definitely. And I think with, you know, as the podcast has grown, my own podcast has grown, um, with more eyes and ears on it, I, some thoughts I'm like, not sure if they're my own. Do you know what I mean? Like (laughs) where I just kind of take on the collective thought, maybe one person's thought, or even, you know, my, my co-founder and one of my best friends, Krista, you know, it's, we're so tightly intertwined in our daily lives, which has been the greatest gift. But as we discussed in a recent solo episode, it's been one of the biggest challenges. You know, we, we definitely have spent a few lifetimes together. And in this one, like we're really bringing up each other's shadow work. So it's, it's been hard to discern what thoughts in my head are true, are mine, um, because I'm the type of person to really worry about what people think of me. Hmm. And I'm, I'm worried about their experience of me or something that I've created. So it's, it's complicated. (laughs) It's really, (laughs) it's tiring sometimes. (laughs) How, so what does shadow work mean? Mm. So we all have like parts of us that are light 
and that our shadow. And what I've come to realize is that, you know, the darkness, the shadow is just as much a part of me as the light Mm -hmm. and is just as important to um, understand as the light and just as important to share with the world as the light, Mm -hmm. you know, because we all have shadow and, you know, whether that so much of it is rooted in how we grew up, who took care of us, our early experiences. And so for me, it is like you said, having that open conversation with myself when something comes up and I'm quote unquote triggered, right? Like I have an emotional response and I feel kind of out of my body. And, um, that's the call. That feeling of overwhelm is the call to be like, Hey, what is this? Hmm. What is this really? You know? And it's been really cool. I haven't figured everything out yet. I was just actually with my boyfriend in New York. We're long distance and it's a new relationship somewhat. And there are some things that came up like, um, I'm so, I'm such a giver to a fault. And sometimes if the other person doesn't, uh, validate how good of a giver I am, I feel so insecure. (laughs) So, um, that was something I had to look at. A giver with the attachment to the outcome. Yeah. And I didn't realize that because I don't like that. I'm like, Ooh, (laughs) what is that? I was like, I don't like, I'm not like that. Am I? But I am. And I think it comes from growing up wanting validation from say my dad, right? Like being so giving myself and wanting validation, even seeing him being such a giver and wanting validation from this person or that person, you know, it's both the, the personal experience of it. And then also observing people doing that. Um, that is, it's so ingrained in who I am and you know, it, it is the working on it and it's also like the honoring of it too. Cause like if I spent all my days just kind of beating myself up for these parts of me, my existence would be really exhausting. Mm-hmm. So while I ask, what is this feeling? I also honor that this way that I've been has served me for so long, whether it's protected me or just made me feel safe. So, um, it's been really, it's been really interesting lately. (laughs) Yeah. So when you are in those states where you're feeling like you're being jarred out of your body, uh, what's the, what's, what's the plan? What do you, what do you do to start to find some tranquility? Um, Lately, it's just been crying. Okay. Like, like, cause usually, usually I'm, when I'm triggered like that, I have like a welling up, you know, that tightness in your mm-hmm. throat. I'm yeah. working on that throat chakra, like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a people, I'm a people pleaser. So it's like very hard for me to be direct and blunt in a compassionate way. Yeah. And so in those moments, and it's been really beautiful with the new relationship to feel that feeling and just like say it out loud. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm feeling. Right. And this is my experience right now. And why what you said or did is making me feel this way. And then it's the allowing of the emotion to, to move through because I, you know, to hold that in would just mean a destructive volcano months or years later. So I usually have like 20 minutes where I'll just like walk and cry. I was in New York, so it was all good. If you see someone walking and crying, it's normal. So (laughs) I just let her rip. (laughs) And then I came back. I was like, oh my God, physically I'm lighter. So I have more room to process. So that's good. So number one, I just say like whatever the physical um, flush is for you, do that. Whether it's yelling, crying, crying. ecstatic movement like whatever moves that energy through your body it's essential in my experience to be able to process the next piece which is the emotional and the ties to where that came from and yeah I I I would say too like being able to talk it out has been so healing Mm -hmm. instead of processing by myself in my own head 
even just writing it down sometimes i'm like this isn't enough i need to talk it out <laughs> yeah you know so the community piece is really important whether it's a best friend whether it's my boyfriend whether it's my family um and sometimes even strangers like i get pretty deep with strangers quite quickly i don't know why yeah with that. um you know that i think you are the same way and it's just really cool because most likely they're going to relate to you in some way or another and whether they offer advice or support or just comfort or whatever it is, not only restores my, my faith in humanity, but also just makes me feel so much less alone. Hmm. I really like the analogy that you brought up of like having more spaciousness inside of yourself to process. Mm -hmm. And I was envisioning like having a garage sale. You know, so you have just all this shit. You're like a hoarder of thoughts and feelings and emotions and memories and all that. And it's all packed up and on top of each other. And then having the opportunity to actually have that, that moment of putting out a lawn and letting somebody else kind of process it, which is, you know, yep. that could be swimming, that could be the ground, that could be breathing, that could be whatever it is, but it all gets kind of turned back into the hole. Totally. There was, um, I was listening to a, a book called Transformations. I don't know mm. if you've ever heard of this book. Mm -mm. It's quite good. And it was getting into the relationship of the uh, the visual visual part of the brain uh, in relation to the, the, the spoken part, that the brocus mm. area is what it's called. And when we go through certain traumatic experiences, uh, there can be like a disconnect between that, that visual part and the, and the speech part, the communication part. And it can almost, it's almost like the bridge is out <coughs> to be able to process that, those visual impressions, experiences out of yourself. And then when you can start to speak it, write it, sing it, whatever it may be, it starts to almost like reinstill that bridge mm. in order to pour that shit out of yourself. So you have more spaciousness to process. That's beautiful. Yeah. I relate to that very uh, much. So sometimes I feel like like, why am I tongue tied? Why am I yeah, exactly. at a loss for uh, words? Yeah, like, there's a thing. I'm it. just like, because ah, I'm so, I can be so expressive, but when it comes to things that are, you know, tr like related to s a trauma that I've experienced, it's very hard for me to articulate. Mm. So that's why, you know, the channeled writing has been so beautiful because I know it's me. You know, I know like my higher self, like, can, like, communicate in that way what's the process of this channel right i feel like that'd be foreign to many people so for me i actually tended i have a sauna as well okay first world problems yeah right exactly very blessed yeah. um but truly you can do this in any space that you feel comfortable that you feel um just not distracted we're so distracted these days so uh, find a space like that. And for me, I love to play binaural beats. I'm going to give you my whole setting so you can yeah, please. take it or not. Yeah, well, the but I love to play binaural beats. And um, I'm sure you can speak to binaural beats in a much more eloquent scientific way than I can. But mm. for me, it just, it almost like I envision my brain as like this crazy web of of thoughts of feelings of assumptions doubts fears like all this stuff and then when binaural when i play binaural beats it's like they kind of like pull apart and create this like perfect um symmetrical pattern in my brain <laughs> and everything just kind of flows <laughs> um so i put that on and i just i breathe for about four or five minutes, you know, whether it's box breathing, um, or just some deep belly breaths, like keeping it simple, putting my hand over my belly really helps to activate that intuitive part of me just to remind myself like that's where it lives, not up in my head. Yep. And then I ask a question and that most recent question was like, what is the purpose of this feeling of being overwhelmed? And you can sit, you know, as long as you need to after you ask. And then literally you just put pen to paper and without judgment, without stopping, without anything, you just write. And it is wild what comes through. You know, I'll write for as long as feels good. And then I'll look at it after. I'm like, who that? <laughs> like who is that you know what i mean mm. and it's so beautiful because i'm like oh my god you're you're there all along what the 
what have I been doing? Hmm. You know? So the more often I've done that, I've just felt so much more peace. And rather than looking outside of myself for the answers, I've like really trusted that I have them. So um, I would encourage your, your listeners to just, you know, set themselves up and create a space that they feel really good. Maybe a candle, maybe incense, whatever. And just ask a question and see what comes through. Hmm. It could be very specific. It could be, should I stay with my boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. You know? Yeah, you just have to ask the question. Mm -hmm. How does a person bring that into their daily life? I guess by having an anchor point in the evening or whatever, it yeah. naturally would. But is that something that you are able like the, I apologize for being so like quotatious and referencing mm -hmm. various things no, that I love just it. like heartfelt, but, um, the like Romans called the, the genius was kind of like every, everybody had the, your, your genius, mm -hmm. you know, so that genius, what you're describing that, that voice that comes through, that yeah. is your genius. Yep. And throughout the days we kind of insulate ourselves with all these different stories of my somebodyness, who I am, who I think I am, who I think I'm supposed to be, mm -hmm. my to-do list, mm -hmm. and this person's, I owe this person that, I got to pay that then, that, 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 as well as <laughs> static noise. And then beneath that, if you give it the spaciousness, there's this inner soul, spirit, God, genius, whatever the heck you want to call it. That's like, I've been here all along. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to shut the hell up. Literally, so sweet, <laughs> so sweet. You're like, I'm so sorry. It's been four years. It's Hello, been a while. Hello. Um, yeah, I think you know. See what feels good to you. Like, I'm not one to preach. Like, do your morning routine. If like your mornings are not your vibe, maybe <laughs> maybe that's not for you. But I do think having. Um, something like channeled writing, meditation, or even like pulling oracle cards to prompt you for maybe a deeper journaling session or, you know, having a playlist of three songs that just make you feel so alive that you put on and you play through and you just move. doesn't matter what it looks like, yeah. whatever. It's just moving the body. And for me, it's movement, nature, singing, writing um that bring me back to that knowing to that voice to that higher self so i would give yourself a few options because some days are going to be different you're not always going to have time to ecstatic dance or channel writing but maybe but maybe it is just a quick pull of an oracle deck and you get a message for the day and maybe you do three sentence reflection on like what that means for you today um, and have that at the same time every day. I do think it's so important for, um, not only the mind to look forward to, but like the body to look forward to that time where you're just like as present as possible. Um, and if you have to, cause we live in a day and age where calendars are definitely a thing, put it in your calendar, set an alarm. Um, I also have little alerts on my calendar that say what's going right today. <laughs> mm. well, what's today? Uh, what? What's today? What's going? What's right? going right today? That sweet uh, cold plunge. That co honestly, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm so grateful. I'm so oh, grateful. The, the cold plunge. <laughs> this conversation with you being in a sauna. What the hell? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and waking up in LA. I was in New York yesterday. So waking up in LA feels so great. T I took a walk today. I saw some beautiful trees today, but we forget because we're always worried about what haven't I done today? What's not going right? What do I have to fix? Mm -hmm. And so this is just a really good reminder for me to take 60 seconds. Be like, what's going right? You, know, What feels really good? Mm -hmm. What am I proud of myself for? Whatever that looks like for you, put in your calendar as a little alert. And see, see how that feels. Um, I do think as humans, because we are so digitally connected, maybe we need to leverage the digital to our advantage and have, you know, be alerts, be more thoughtful and mindful. Yeah. If you can't beat it, join it. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> as you're talking about the inner voice and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then the, the idea of like the genius or that inner kind of whisper speaking through, um, it's interesting how we are so... I think oftentimes we're like, what do they call those? Autom automatons? Is that a mm. word? Automatons? Or like automated creatures. We're like, yeah. we're just running on these systems and these habits. 
And I think it's easy to think of like my, my thoughts being controlled and, you know, getting to a point where I'm allowed to, to speak out that inner genius to use the same metaphor. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the idea popped up of like, uh, like how movement is also a part of that genius Mm -hmm. and moving in a certain way that you're like, okay, I pull my shoulders back and I suck my belly in and I kind of walk like this and okay, this is, that's like, it's literally the exact same thing as Mm. being controlled by your thoughts, being bossed around by who you think you're supposed to be or all of that. And then there's another, there's that, that whisper part that just feels like, wow, it's almost like I'm being moved through the world. And you can tap into that through dance. Very obviously when you first start dancing or whatever, sometimes maybe you'll, if you do a lot of yoga, you'll be like kind of yogic with your dancing or at some point you have to take all that, dogma and costume off mm-hmm. and allow that inner genius to come through and then it's like whoa yes you just dance the whole night out well you introduced me to um west african dance oh, yeah, the right. fundamentals class which um i've taken other people to um since then and i've continued to go and it is just that that is that for me mm-hmm. you know i what's so cool as like a former quote-unquote dancer now I'm like, I don't give a fuck if I do it right. You know what I mean? And it's so freeing because I'm a people pleaser. I'm like, all right, tell me how to do it. What are the counts? Da, da, da. Yeah. And this is just so primal and celebratory. And there's so much love in the movement and like celebration of bodies and ancestors. And it's just, I mean, I ball every time I every time I go Mm. it's so emotional but yeah that that movement you're right like we all all is a blanket statement but like we just navigate the world like okay this is how I should do this this is how I should walk this is how I should talk I I can't do that because that's that would freak people out Mm -hmm. you know and so we're constantly like censoring ourselves which I feel like is just kind of crushing you're like suffocating yourself yeah that censorship. wild spirit yeah. that's so genius yeah i wonder what, what what do you see in your do you do like vision board manifestation whatever do you do you think there's something on the other side of all of this work that you're mm-hmm. doing and and meeting your shadows and all those those words that i think yeah. sometimes get there's like barnacles attached to them they kind of get a little bit jacked up especially if you're living in venice totally. um but i think as far as people that i am in contact with and i love and appreciate mm-hmm. i see you as a person that truly actually is on that path and is doing those things mm-hmm. um do you feel like there's anything on the other side of that or is it just an ongoing evolution or um it's kind of a strange yeah, no, nebulous I, question. But. No, it's it's good to think about. So I haven't done a vision board in quite some time and I was I've been actually getting the little signs and pings to do one. Mm. And mainly because I'm such a visual person. Yep. So to see something every day you know, if it's not on my calendar, I I don't know if it exists. You know what I mean? Which is yep. a great thing and also really annoying. So I really need to see things. Um, and so I do believe in a vision board and seeing uh, that thing that you want to become or the career, the person, the house, the this, the that. I do, I do believe in the repetition of seeing that and um, believing that that is coming. Um, and I also, you know, am really committed to the practice of understanding that I already am that, Mm -hmm. you know? And so what can I do today to reinforce that I already am that, you know, I am, um, I am a musician who makes incredible music that touches millions of people. Mm. Right. Like I am, um, you know, whether I see myself in my relationship in the long term, like I am, um, a thoughtful, loving, ever evolving partner, you know, Mm. I, you know, I am those things already rather than most of my life. I felt like I've needed to sacrifice and work so hard because I'm not that yet. So I have to get there. How do I get there? Oh, it must involve so much work and steps and this and that. And that doesn't work for me. Yeah. You know, I'm 
again, that visual, that physical type of person. So to embody it actually is so powerful for me. Yeah. So powerful. So, you know, working on my music and, and embodying the singer songwriter that I am, you know, instead of giving in to like, uh, I'm one of a freaking hundreds of thousands of people making music. Who's going to care? Right. Yeah. It's just like, it's that daily practice. I think words are almost creepily powerful and the, the, the tone, the intonation that we utilize the words from. So it's like we're casting spells, we're spelling mm-hmm. words. And it's very interesting when you hear someone, the way that you said all those things, it was literally you're speaking that mm-hmm. into reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, another yeah. way to say the word but not actually have the feeling behind it is saying, I am a great musician. You know, you're like, mm-hmm. you're like kind of dodging it. Trisha's like, I like absolutely don't believe this or maybe don't believe that I'm allowed to believe this or, right. you know, whatever the, the baggage right. is around that. And it's a very fascinating thing to, to see that with myself and other people. I'm just noticing the way that people use tone and language and you can hear when you're you're speaking, you are mm. speaking it into existence. I, I truly believe that, and uh, playing with just the, the the pitch and the tone of your voice, I think, is almost like it's like augmenting the the way that you're stirring the pot, you know, or casting 100%. the spell. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, thoughts become things, and words become things for sure. Yeah. You know, for me at least, like. I'm I'm saying some things lately and I'm like, you better rephrase that. Yeah. You better say it different <laughs> yeah. or it's going to become a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, so I, I completely agree. Words definitely cast spells for good or bad. Yeah. So what's, what's the, what's challenging for you presently? What do you feel like is like, what's the, the, mm, yeah. What's challenging it is really that embodiment of how expansive I am, Hmm. how creatively expansive I am. Um, I think it's easier for me to play safe and play small and to not honor all that is and all that's to come because it just seems very daunting to me. Do you have a sense of where that came from? Um... Not that this is gonna yeah, turn it's into a full like, blown therapy it, session. Yeah, no, it's okay. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I miss my therapist. <laughs> right. I haven't seen her in a couple weeks. <laughs> um, so it's great. Yeah. Uh, I'll pay you later. Okay, right. um, yeah, I think this is a realization that I've had, and maybe you'll, your listeners out there will relate. Where I was the firstborn. I am the firstborn, and uh, my parents have always encouraged me to do what I love. Always. Like never have not been like, do you, what do you want to be? Dancer, singer, actor, whatever you want to do, we got you. Mm. Um, As far as like support and guidance and all of that, which I'm so grateful for. And there was, there was and is, because it still exists within me, um, a pressure to do the thing. Um, and do it in a way that is successful, which as an artist, I'm like, I don't know what that means. I really don't know what success means as an artist. Mm. I, I don't. And I'm trying to figure that out because I'm in a world right now with the podcast and it's very successful. And, you know, I'm seeing a lot of like, um, um, flags of success, you know, money, listenership opportunities, which are incredible. I also just want to be aware that like, there are other forms of success too. So as I make my music, maybe it's not about how many downloads I have of a song or albums I sell, you know, maybe for me, it's about just creating it, you know, and, and having that be something that I really celebrate that I did, I did that. Um, But to go back to my parents, I do feel like there was a pressure on the kids They didn't know they were putting it on us at all. So I feel like my parents very much so did the best they could. But there was a pressure on the kids to do what they loved and succeed doing it. Hmm. Um, Because that's such a huge part of why they were together. 
So it was like, kids, please succeed, have a fulfilling life because this is why we're like, this is our purpose, which is beautiful and also a lot as a kid to take on. Yeah. You know, we didn't know what that meant, but it was like just this subconscious like, oh, fuck, you know, like it's just heaviness. Um, and I still feel that, you know, I had dinner with my parents the other night um, and I found myself like telling them like, okay, so yeah, this is what it this is what I did this past month. These are my accomplishments. This is what's coming down the pipeline. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, but it, that very is very common LA conversation. Yeah. But it's like a, cause I want to show them, Yeah. you know, I want to make them proud. Yeah. I want that their vision for us to do what we love, be fulfilled. But like, what about me? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, how am I feeling about it? So that's been quite challenging. Yeah, that's fi- I've noticed that very often. I'll almost go out of my way to tell people what's like going wrong in mm-hmm, my life mm-hmm. just to like break the norm of like, here's why I'm awesome. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> You'll love me. Just just watch. Totally. I'll show you all the bullet points of why you should love me. Mm-hmm. And so going the other direction of just like, oh man, like my sleep was shit last night. And you know, it's just yeah. like, I'm feeling, I felt really vulnerable and kind of uncomfortable this morning i felt like i was wrapped up in my thoughts and mm-hmm. you know i felt like a like a prisoner inside of my mind mm-hmm. <laughs> like how do you take that who <laughs> <laughs> did that they were like <laughs> can i get you a coffee <laughs> totally. but it's a good thing it's a I think, way to because that if you're yeah. not that we i need to be you know like being all pessimistic all the time but i think there is we get wrapped up in thinking that we need to be a certain thing yeah and i think if you can lead from a vulnerable place a genuine vulnerable place it doesn't need to be you don't have to make up shit of why you're feeling a certain way but you can change the 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 channel the lens anytime yes and if you feel the obligation of showing up in a way that is successful in quotations whatever Mm -hmm. that means to to you or your audience or your parents or whatever um it puts a pressure on everybody else. And now everyone else has to zip up their tie and stand up straight and suck their belly in. And like, Good, here we go. Yep, mm-hmm. Here's my bullet points of why you should love me. Mm-hmm. There's like, uh, I'll shut up in a second. Ram, more oh, Ram Dass da- 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 stuff. He says, he says something like you, I'll pretend to believe you are who you think you are if you pretend to believe I am who I think I am. And there's so much of that. Yeah. I mean, I play that all the time. Of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why I do the cold plunge and the sauna and stuff. I feel like it's like a little bit of a shake up. Definitely. Because <laughs> I think so much of it is physical. Mm. Or at least it turns into like a physical. It gets so wrapped up. It's all tied up. You know? Yeah. So that's why I love that you do that. Mm. I love that you do that. Yeah. Um, one thing I would be interested in talking about, because we're going to wrap this thing up, because mm. this is technically, it's a, a strange, convoluted news slash podcast hybrid thing. Um, but I would like to talk about how you, one, communicate authentically on the internet, um, because that's a very interesting thing. Um, it's kind of what the conversation is about in general. Um, maybe just that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I love Instagram for that. And yeah. I'm speaking mainly to Insta- Instagram because that's mainly what I use to communicate on the intranets. Um, I and building a building a brand, building a podcast, all that stuff so that it's not coming mm-hmm. from a place of misalignment and then you're building the structure on a foundation that's that's imbalanced. Definitely. And I think that's the just to to like re focus that the the question like i think oftentimes we we start off on this belief system of like this is success but the, there was never even a foundation because it wasn't on anything that was heartfelt mm-hmm. or passionate or authentic or a genius it was some bullshit idea of what you thought was supposed to be or what right. you thought would impress your whoever and then it's like the it's like the pyramids flipped upside down and then you build on top of that but the foundation is just like this little point yeah i mean absolutely that visual speaks to me I'm really <laughs> at it. um but yeah i especially with the podcast i mean we started that that was born almost 30 was born out of our conversations when we were going through the transition from our 20s to our 30s which is a time i'm, I'm sure a lot of you can relate that is a little chaotic things come up and out Um, usually there's like this big life event that just kind of forces you to look at your life, um, more thoughtfully and to become a bit more present to what's working, what's not. 
um, and who you really are, not what society, the world, your family, your friends think you should be. Mm -hmm. And so because that is our foundation, because we just decided that we were going to have honest conversations about how we were feeling and what we were going through and, um, and support one another, no matter what. I do believe that that has influenced the way I show up online as Lindsay Simsek. You know, I am allergic to showing up and trying to portray a shinier version of me. Um, of course, there are going to be times that I'm going to have like makeup on. I'm going to be at an event that might seem shiny to some people, but I hope I hope to just share consistently um, the good, the in process, the wild, the funny, the random as hell. I don't consider myself someone who's out there like trying to inspire every day. I'm just trying to relate as often as possible. Um, and if that means, you know, sharing, you know, if I'm like plucking my chin hairs, um, with the world, <laughs> They need to know. Right? They they need to know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just kind of like, hey, I'm a human here on earth. Like, what's up? How are you? What are you doing? That's kind of my that's kind of my motto cuz I do think because so many people are on Instagram like, okay, let me let me serve in the sense that I can just relate. You know, I'm not trying to sell them on this idea of me. I'm really just wanting to connect with other people. Um and it goes into dating slash everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's like, that's what changed for me in, in, in my dating life. Like when I realized, oh my gosh. Okay. So when I'm completely myself, like as in process as possible, and I'm just <laughs> there to be loved, there's going to be someone who will be so madly in love with that and attracted to that. I don't have to cover up or, you know, mold myself into this thing for this person to like, because eventually I'm going to get real tired of carrying, of having that costume on and they're going to see like, huh? that's not how I thought you, I, I, I'm attracted to what I was initially attracted to. And now you're someone different who is really me. Yep. So like, I just, it all changed for me when I was like, all right, well, he's going to love all parts of me whenever he comes in and I'm just going to like keep it out there and keep committed to just relating and not trying to be anyone else but myself. And it sounds really cheesy saying it out loud, but it worked, mm. you know, and now I'm in a relationship where, yeah, I mean, all parts of me are out there, whether it's uncomfortable or not, but he so beautifully holds space for that. And I hopefully am able to hold space for him as he, you know, evolves and changes. Um, and that's just like, for me, like next level relationship building. Mm. I think there's also something to acknowledging that my authentic self may be and likely still is a costume. You know, and it's like there that will that will come mm -hmm. off. My 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 idea of what is authenticity will probably change in five years. Oh, totally. I think that's like the beauty of uh, my hope for my relationship and anyone's relationship is that honoring of change. Always, I had like an ex boyfriend years ago that would kind of jab me and be like, "Man, you've changed." And I wish I was quick enough to say, <laughs> "Yeah, of course I have." Thank goodness that I've changed honey because we're changing and I just think you know to be in a relationship where like the both parties are really honoring the other's changes oh my gosh I mean the possibilities are endless there you know what I mean I do <laughs> it's like it's really powerful and also activates our creativity it activates um, just a deeper connection, like one that you could never even imagine. So yes, I think who I am today will be different in five years, mm. but good. Yep. I'm excited. Who is she? Me too. <laughs> I'm excited to be living right? in the five years. Who the fuck is she? <laughs> That'd yeah, be I'm great. Excited. We'll look back on this moment. Totally. Do you remember that time? Totally. 
I'll have a long gray beard, <laughs> wispy. Please. Yeah. Please. I'm I'm it's looking be, forward to that, it's Aaron. Gonna be, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, where should people go from here? We got to wrap this wrap this thing up. What's uh what's what's where are people people obviously check out. I'll be on the almost 30. I'll probably release mm-hmm. this in the same date. Mm-hmm. Um so if people want to continue the conversation, um That'll go over to Almost 30 Podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what's, where should people go from here? So people can listen to the Almost 30 Podcast on you know Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Um, I am on Instagram. That's my main way to connect with people these days digitally at Lindsay Simsick, S-I-M-C-I-K. Please DM me. I'm, I'm on there um, loving talking to you all. And... Yeah, that's it. I I just, I'm excited to kind of share what I'm creating this year. So I'm making music. Um, So look out for that. But otherwise, y'all are doing great. Whoever you are out there, just like, I I feel your audience and they're so sweet and conscious and curious. So like, keep going, keep exploring and trust, trust yourself. You know, I think that's been one of the biggest lessons for me is to trust myself and so um hopefully this conversation especially your pearls of wisdom which i'm taking with me just will to reinstate and and reestablish that like really deep trust in yourself hmm. i love that um thank you i so greatly appreciate you you're welcome and uh appreciate you. yeah i look forward to continuing to watch the evolution Thank you. Five years, Likewise. my wispy beard, <laughs> my saggy balls. I just see like <laughs> you, but like r- it's like Rick Rubin, but Aaron. Yeah. Can't wait. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, over now. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you loved that conversation as much as I did. And uh, if you did, you get some insights, some specific bits of uh, some insightful moments that you found to be fantastic. Por favor, share them on the internet. Tell your friends. Share Instagram is a likely place. You could tag Align Podcast, A-L-I-G-N Podcast. Uh, You could also tag Almost 30 Podcast or Lindsay Simsick. And uh, I hope you guys just got a lot out of that. I really enjoy my conversations with Lindsay. I hope you guys love the first free week of the Align Method online program that can be found on my Instagram page in the bio at Align Podcast and uh, also can be found at alignpodcast.com. And uh, it's pretty great. If you have interest in getting your shoulders to become unrounded, so your shoulders are pulled back, your head sitting stacked on top of your shoulders and your hips and your feet again, uh, and also some of the fundamentals of how to sit more effectively on the ground and some breathing practices is what you will get in that first week. And if you didn't love it, no worries. You just press the cancel button anytime. That's all good. If you do continue on the second week, you will receive the Align Band, which is, uh, I think you guys probably know what that is by now. Heavy duty resistance band, door anchor, traveling case, user guide, all that stuff. Thanks for using iTunes. Thanks for doing you. Thanks for sharing this with your friends. And uh, I will talk to you next week.